Today we are diving into one of the most exciting link improvements coming in .NET 10, the brand new left join and right join operators. My name is Brugain and welcome to .NET Mastery. If you are new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, that way you do not miss any future notification. If you have worked with database and entity framework core, you know that in real world implementation, left join and right joins are super common. But here's the thing, up until now implementing a left join or a right join has been a little painful. Well, I'll just say it was not pretty. You had to chain few things together using select many, group join, default if empty, or sometimes you can use that with navigation properties using the dot include. But explaining all of that to junior developer is super painful and it feels like cryptic coding. But .NET 10 changes everything. Microsoft has finally given us first class link support for both left and right join methods. It is clean, readable, intuitive code that does exactly what you would expect. And the best part, Entity Framework Core already recognizes these new methods so you can directly use them in your Entity Framework link queries. Let me switch to Visual Studio and show you that with example using a console application. In the Visual Studio here, you can see we have a student class where we have student first name, last name, email and a department ID. We have a department class where we have name and description of a department and that is straightforward. The department ID is a nullable field. The department ID is nullable here to allow adding students without department. As an example, if I go to the school context that I have here, and again this is a console application, nothing fancy. I just have added the DB context in memory to replicate and see something real quick. I'm creating the DB set for student and department, and then you can see where I am seeding the data. I'm adding three departments. When I'm adding students here, you can see there are two students, Alice and Diana, who do not have a department. Now let's say using Entity Framework Code you want to retrieve all the students and then the department they belong to. How can you do that? That is pretty simple. I have already done that here. You will use the include statement on the student's context and then what you want to select from there, you will define that. Like from students you want first name, last name and email. And from the department you want to retrieve name of the department if that is not present. I want to display none. Then right here I have a for each statement where I'm displaying all of that. Let me run the application and perfect we have the result. You can see the Alice here does not belong to any department and the Diana does not belong to any department. So that is great and it is functional. But that is what we are doing using the default or built-in include statement. With .NET 10, we have something more explicit and traditional to what we are writing in a SQL query and that is a left join or right join. Let me show you how that will work here. We will have a variable query and there on the context we have dot students. Now rather than using the include statement that we have been using for so many years to do all the magic for ourselves, we will be now using something called as a left join. And when I add left join, first thing that we have to define is what is the table that we are joining students. So I want to join the context.departments and that will be a left join on students. Then we need to define the key. So on the student here, we have the student dot department ID. And then for the next one, let me call that department that will be department. On that we have the ID and not the department ID. That way we are defining on which key we are doing the left join. The first one will be inside the students here and the next one will be inside the table that we are joining that is department. Then finally we need a selector and what we want from each table. I will add a comma here and there I will use the student 
add a comma and the department we will be using the same spelling here and perfect now what we want to create out of those two object that will be a new object itself let me create that here and perfect what do we want to select from the student i want the first name i can copy what i have here and let me paste that this will be student and that is because we are using that as the alias name so we have student here and where we have the department we will check here if the department name is present so i can say department dot name if that is present we will use that else we will use none that way you can see the syntax difference that we have when we are using the left join once we have that here we can display that in the result let me add that and on the query this will be the query here i will convert that to a list now the left join is only available in dotnet 10. let me run the application and see if that works perfect we have the response here and you can see that is exactly the same i should have added a console.right line here separate that out and let me run that again and perfect you can see include is doing all of that magic here but when you are using left join you have to explicitly define the columns on which you are joining or if you have some complex requirement based on your table you can easily accomplish that using left join that being said we also have right join in dotnet 10 and right now it is in preview but once it is released you can easily use that in your production application now you might be wondering that why do i use left join when i already have include and that is super simple and straightforward well when you are using include here you can see you had to add the navigation property if you remove those navigation property the include will not work and let me show that if i save that here you will notice we will get an error in just a second here and there we go you can see that does not work if you do not have a navigation property but it is not true when you are using the new left join because that will automatically or rather manually do the join based on what you define so with that if i run the application the left join will still be functional and let me show that perfect you can see that is working and that is great news with that entity framework core will be more powerful with the inclusion of left join and right join functionalities i hope you found this video useful and for more exciting features like this make sure that you subscribe to the channel that way you do not miss any future videos